before the broadcast tonight. We were just sitting in the back room. Our producer came up to us and said, okay, I need y'all's predictions for the night. We went through them, and we made our picks, and I said, hmm, Alicia versus Dark. Well, Dark's Zerg. I think Dark's going to win. And, uh, and then I actually did a little bit of research for my show notes. Of course, every day we sit down, we, do, we prepare our show notes. We've got at least 33 pages of why show notes tweet every about, single why day. Why don't you tweet about it, Ben? <laughs> I actually rewrote the dictionary, guys, and added a lot of new stock of two words in it. And uh, while I was doing my homework, I realized to myself, oh, Dark has only played 10 tournament PVZs, and he's lost all but two of them. So <laughs> Dark is my pick, but I'm not feeling as confident in it now as I was when I yeah. initially made that selection. Well, Dark is, of course, as Zerg spawning on the right top side of Daybreak, while Alicia is a Korean proto spawning on the left bottom side of Daybreak. Dark, of course, uh, Korean as well. Dark is a player, Ben, who really tried hard to qualify for the NESL Season 3. He made it all the way to the finals of one of our qualifiers. Uh, there, unfortunately, he lost against Archer, one of those protest players mm -hmm. that he did lose to. It was 3-0, I recall correctly? It was one-sided. Yes. 3-0, uh, 3-1, something like that. Okay. Uh, but in any case, Dark did not give up, Ben, and he straight away played the next qualifier, made it to the final again, so back-to-back -back finals in an NESL qualifier. It also gave, maybe it was a plan to get extra money. Because he, th he thought, if I win the first one straight away, I can't I'm play done. in the next one. So he got $250 for being the runner-up of one of our qualifiers, and then he got $750 for making it into a season. Give me that 1000 bucks. Smart. Now, Dark had to win a lot of tough games to get here, man, yeah. but uh, Alicia is a very, very difficult opponent. I'm very eager to see how these guys match up against one another. Uh, although the fact that this first game is on Daybreak, I do think we're going to see a very standard sit-back-and-wait style of Zerg. And a very standard sit back and wait style of Protoss. The kind of standard band you've just been talking about with David Kim mm -hmm. during Connected. Did you feel connected to David Kim? Man, we've connected and on a whole new level. Like we're like friends now. Like yeah. After I finish up this broadcast, I'm going to go have some drinks with David Kim. <laughs> yep. Nice. And, and we'll Froden? We'll I heard that Froden is uh, having drinks in chat. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll go to his house and, uh, and uh, you know, we'll play some video games with his kids. And uh, then we're going to play some golf tomorrow. Oh, you're real close with that yeah. game. Next, uh, next week, I'm going to go into the Blizzard offices and tell them that they need to buff the uh, Zerg units and Heart of the Swarm some more. And the week after that, Roaches are one supply again. <laughs> and, and Mr. Bitter wins WCS 2013. That's the plan, Kev. Sick life. You're like the master of deception. You're like Kimber James. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Somewhere somebody got that joke, <laughs> and it was hilarious. What do all these things have in common, Ben? <laughs> Bill Gates, Watergate, Mr. Bitter. Bill Clinton. They're all the biggest no, lies. Not Bill Gates. <laughs> what? He was oh, um, yeah. Well, no, Bill Gates is a good man. Sorry. I missed that one. Bill Clinton, yes. Man, that interview was hilarious. I really <laughs> <laughs> Now they're so confused. Like, what the hell are these guys talking about? Just Google. Yep, going just deep. Google. Going deep. <laughs> with Kimber James. <laughs> one of the best interviews I've ever watched. I want to do an interview like that once. I think that would be very fitting for you. It's like the, it's like your perfect job. No. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm a serious man, Ben. That's a serious interview. <laughs> it was not. It was. You just don't take Kimber James seriously. <laughs> hey, what's well, nothing wrong with Kimber James? Anyway, guys, Alicia is just um, droning up as usual. Curious to see where he's going. Ben did not take any guesses yet in his natural. Uh, we, of course, saw Alicia play a lot at the Season 3 offline finals. It uh, did not go very well against Stefano. It went okay against Red, even though he looked quite hopeless the first two games where Red was playing exceptionally well. Uh, but then somehow everything just turned around. Alicia's opening up. Wow, did you see that, Ben? He started plus one, scared the Zergling away. In the moment the Zerglings left, he cancelled plus one and dropped the Stargate. Small mm. things, but they matter. Very interesting. Alicia, mind game to the max. Uh, he's also doing this off just two gas, yeah. Kevin. So I think that uh, Dark is going to be a little bit confused. He's going to make all, uh, perhaps quite a few units. But I still feel the moment that Zerg is going to see those, star uh, those target units fly in, certainly if the first unit is a Void Ray, they're just going to be like, oh, cool. Let me, let me make 20 additional drones, get a couple of spores here and there. And yeah, you might have tricked me, but it doesn't really do a whole lot to my you know, plan. We're finally seeing the third gas go down in this natural, but I can't help but wonder if this is going to be like a four gate with Void Rays uh, into that third base. Because. I mean, he just... I don't think so. Oh, okay, now he takes the fourth gas as well. Okay, maybe I'm overthinking it a little bit. We'll see exactly how this game ends up unfolding. As uh, we do see that Overlord Scout making its way into the natural. Pokes in, confirms that the Stargate is there. 
more importantly, I think you could have seen the Phoenix as well. Of course, you see a sort of an image of the Phoenix in the Stargate if you look at it closely. Immediately, Dark makes four Overlords, man. It's a little bit, uh, well, so I won't say sloppy to be supply block right now, but he has a lot of larvae. So as soon as his Overlords pop, he will still be able to make all those drones that he wants to make. Yep. That Stargate is such an important tell, man. It gives him at least one, maybe two more big rounds of drones. Yep. And uh, there we do see five drones going down as long as well as that Evo chamber, which is of course very necessary for the uh, spores. Alicia keeping his first two uh, phoenixes in his main base, which I don't really agree with, Ben. Of course, you sort of want to hide them, but he already saw the target, and he also saw the fact that phoenixes were in production. So then I feel you might as well just send out your first and second phoenix, so you can pick up an overlord that's somewhere floating around the map before you're actually going for the big kills uh, into the main base. Now, Dark is doing something really interesting, Kevin. He's going up to Lair with no Roach Warren. Which means he's saying to uh, he's saying to Alicia, hey, I'm going to defend anything you're going to throw at me with only Queens and Zerglings. That's uh, bold, man. Queens are coming in. Does he have energy for Transfusion? He almost has it, man. It's going to be so close. He can drop the Transfusion. He's not oh. going to do it. Man, that would have been so nasty for Alicia. That would have been really, really sucky to use two Graviton Beans and then not being able to pick up one Queen. As it happens, that queen does end up going down. Dark just barely missing that chance to transfuse. Lots more drones, but I mean, Dark making so many workers uh, going to 73 drones now. Queen is on the way, but this queen is going to fall as well. A little bit sloppy here by Dark, losing both queens already. But at the end of the day, that's just 300 minerals. And of course, you'd rather keep those queens alive. And he could have done it as well. Look at the minimap, by the way. Alicia's going up to three bases really, really that quick. That is crazy. Dark makes 13 more drones. Wow. So uh, we've now got a Zerg player with like the ultimate Zerg economy, man. He's going to have about 85 drones. And uh, that means that Dark can do just about whatever he wants for the rest of this game. What is it going to be? Well, uh, Infester, Infest, what's that unit called? Infest Infester. Infester Tech is what's coming into play for Dark. He's also got double Evo Chamber, so it's going to be Infester Ling, uh, Hello, which ben. is really cool. What I really wonder about is when uh, when I play against a low grand Master League Zerg player, I feel they have the ultimate Phoenix defense. Whenever I cast pro games, I always see these guys just getting a ton of drones, queens, and overlords left and right, which just doesn't make any sense to me. If you watch Alfie play against Violet, man, he killed like 30, 43 overlords and a bunch of queens. Why can I only kill three drones against yeah, your you average Yeah, you play against Zerg? Vampire Hunter 420. Yes. And uh, Poop Feast 448. <laughs> man, that guy's good too. It's like the brother of the real Poop Feast. And <laughs> they have the ultimate Phoenix defense, and somehow, I don't know, it just kind of blows me away. Uh, that Infestor Energy Upgrade did just start up. Dark still hasn't made any units, Kevin. He's got five lings out. He's got four queens out. The rest all drones. Finally, on the production tab, we see eight Infestors going down. That was hopefully right in time for the Energy Upgrade. And we've got a couple of Zealots marching across the map, which I find very, very odd at the 11 minute, 30 second mark. But that might just be me. It feels like a... Uh uh, you might actually be able to cancel this fourth base, which is really, really crazy. As eight infestors are on the way, but they're not out yet. The roaches are not out yet either. So actually, these zealots will be able to force a cancel on this base. How ludicrous is this? And that's what happens when you make no units, Kev. Silly things like this unfold. No uh, cancel. Not even canceled. So dark. Not sure what he's do what he's doing right now. Uh, does have a lot of units popping out in his third base. It's going to be very difficult for Alicia to move forward any further than he already has. But now I still wonder, like, is this really worth it? He's sacrificing all these zealots. And he's so risky no, with those, those Phoenixes those as well. Those zealots cost more than that hatchery he just killed. Yeah. That's how I feel. Look at Dark. He's just not even moving his roaches. Now he is going to move his roaches, but he's going to lose one roach in the process. And finally he starts moving around a little bit, but really, really sloppy play what I'm witnessing here. I'm not trying to sound overly critical, guys, because I know that whenever you play, I've noticed it last week again, but when I finally played a competitive tournament, I felt that playing this game was so damn hard, so much harder than when you just play some ladder games. But these are just mistakes that a player like Dark Scalibur, he shouldn't make. Phoenix is still going to be active, making their way over into the main base of, uh, of Dark, which uh, can be a little bit dangerous when you know Infestor Tech is out, but he also knows with that Observer where the army is. So uh, isn't uh, at any real risk of losing any Phoenixes just yet. Just going to lift up a couple of drones and then get out of there. In total, 12 workers have been killed by Alicia this game, taking Dark down to just 77 Harvesters. Yeah, but that made Dark mad, Ben, as he immediately made 13 more drones, so he's going to be up to 90 drones. He's going to be able to max out at rapid speed. He has four hatcheries, five hatcheries even, uh, so that's sick, and that's six hatches on the way as well. This observer is still just... Uh, Hiding over here. A little I can see surprised you. that Hive hasn't started yet, Kev. Spire is already about a quarter of the way complete. Yeah, and he has money for it as well. More than enough money for it. So, I mean, it looks like he wants to go up to, you know, to Greater Spire, but maybe he's just thinking Zergling Infestor Corruptor, which 
you know, it's a possible unit composition. I mean, you can make it work in certain situations, but we've got Colossi out on the map, man, and Zerklings just aren't going to really get it done uh, anymore once that Colossus number starts to climb a little. There's high vis on the way right now as well, Ben. Alicia is going to most likely uh, fire up plus three immediately, and with plus three, this army is going to be so much more powerful already. 14 minutes and 40 seconds, a bunch of Colossus on the map, plus two ready, and your Phoenix is still alive. Uh, I kind of like that. Well, 15 more drones, man. He's just going to make a yeah, gazillion amounts of spine yeah. crawlers. He's already starting to produce some spines at but that forward base. I actually think that the fact that he delayed his uh, hive so much, Ben, I think Alicia will be able to hit this timing with a bunch of Colossus. Yeah, this is a really awkward time for Dark. He's at 100 supply. doesn't really have supply room for Corruptors. It can only produce three of them right now. This is a really scary army, Kevin. This is just the most standard pre-Broodlord push ever. But because that hive was so delayed, it's coming. it looks like it's coming yeah. a lot faster than it normally would be. And we're going to see a small Zergling run by. Going to try to buy a little bit of time for himself. Nice blink over here by Alicia. He's going to pick up three infestors immediately. Almost four. Only gets two. Now four. A lot of good fungals going down, but the army of Alicia is just massive right now. And it doesn't matter how much fungal you have, these stalkers just blinking all over everything. Spine crawlers not yet completed, and therefore not actually offering much resistance in this defense. Alicia makes it look easy, Kev, but I can't help but yeah. feel like Dark made some big mistakes. Dark really called this upon himself, forgetting that high tech. Also in the start, making a few sloppy mistakes, not canceling his hatchery. Uh, just not really doing anything with all the information that he had. Lost perhaps a queen or two too many as well. But I really don't feel that that is what decided the outcome of this game. Just the simple fact that his hive was way too late. That's really uh, what set it all in stone. Yeah, Dark's going to try to still stick around. He does have uh, an okay sized army, about 90 army supply against 110. But the problem is it's just not the kind of quality supply that you want in this situation. There's another big blink. Getting up underneath those Corruptors. Stalker's just going to sit there and take the damage from now on. Colossi doing a great job in the back. And Alicia will very easily clean up the remnants of Dark's army. Yep. Just all that remains is a bunch of Corruptors. Zergling streaming in right now as well, but that's not going to be enough. As these Corruptors will fall, Dark, uh, of course, was able to reduce a lot of units from all those hatcheries, but nowhere near enough, Ben, as Alicia takes the first game. A runner-up of the previous season, very and convincingly. And still playing some very strong StarCraft. Goes up 1-0 right off the bat with a very basic Protoss push that we see all the time on Daybreak. That I almost do all the time. This is very similar to how I play. Only I go double robo. Yeah, but still very solid. Double yeah, robo, no. single robo, that same push. Very tough to deal with. Folks, we're going to take another short break. Game number two, Alicia versus Dark, when we return.